What's up you guys? Today I'm going to show you my solar setup that I use for my Suron. I use this when I go out to the desert over here in Ocotillo. I use this occasionally when I go out to remote locations and I want to ride. And it's pretty much the bare minimum setup that you could expect in order to charge directly from the sun and be able to power your Suron. Now I have a 60 volt stock Suron set up here. Sprocket in the back, it's all stock. I have the Shinko 244 tires along with the Shimano HO3C uh, composite type brakes. So other than that, everything on the bike is stock. I do have a three inch Pro Taper riser bars in the front. Now these panels are each 100 watts and they're in a suitcase style setup. So they are in series underneath here you can see there is one junction box going to the other side of the solar panel setup so these fold in half into a briefcase and have a carrying handle and a case which makes it really easy to move these around so there's two solar suitcases here putting out a total of 400 watts now realistically from the sun you can expect to get about 350 to 360 watts maximum realistically uh, with all of the cabling splitters uh, and inversion from the 40 or so volts that we're getting here or 20 to 40 volts we're getting here from the panels down into the voltage of the pack. So from these 100 watt panels we get the 350 or 360 watts coming in directly here through this splitter. This four-way splitter goes into the unit. We're able to monitor not only the different wattage going in but also wattage going out. So you can see the total watts going in from the solar panel here and the total watts going out to the charging uh, to the charger for the bike itself. So this charger for the Suron takes about 620 watts roughly. Uh, you can see that if we push this button here that'll turn the charger off and you can see the wattage will drop down to zero here as well. Uh, we're currently at 49% on the battery pack. We have uh, the hours until full. So as you start using it, that'll be hours until empty. We have a 60 watt power delivery USB as well as 18 watt quick charge for phones and a regular 2.4 amp 5 volt USB A outputs as well. Two 120 volt outputs do 2000 watts total, 3500 watt surge, and it is a pure sine wave so you can charge things like electronics and things that are sensitive as well. If you really want to cheat, I also have a 230 watt wall charger that I can use. I can plug that in to a generator or into a household outlet, shore power, and get this thing topped off. Or if at night I need to increase the power a little bit before I go somewhere, that's the, that's the charger that I would use right there. So overall, this is a 3000 watt hour. It's a Yeti 3000X. So it's a 3000 watt hour unit. And that's the capacity of the total battery power inside of this thing. The Suron has a 2000 watt hour battery. So fairly large. It's about two thirds the size of the battery that's in the Goal Zero. Now that works out because of efficiencies and losses. You're able to fully charge a Suron from this battery out with a solar setup and not completely deplete the battery. So you'll still have say 15, maybe 20% left uh, once you're done charging, even if you aren't using solar. That's just if you're using the battery pack standalone. Now, if you have the solar hooked up, you got to remember that you are inputting 300, in this case right now, we're getting about 324 watts, but normally full day of sun without any clouds or haze in the sky, we'd be getting closer to 350, 360 watts. So if we turn this back on, that will start the charging back to the bike and you'll notice, and there goes the charging with the bike. The fan kicks on and you'll notice that the wattage starts to be output on this meter and it's gonna reflect the total 620 watts or so that it takes uh, 630, 620, somewhere in there to power the Suron. So we're putting in about at 320 watts and we're using about 630. We're putting in just about half of the wattage that we're actually using. In fact, just a little over 
half of the wattage we're using. So at this point, we could theoretically charge and still have even more than 20% left, probably 30 or 40% with how much the solar is adding to the battery as we charge. Now in the desert, what I would do is I would top off my Suron and then as soon as it's full, obviously I'd unhook it and leave this setup going. And this setup would continue harvesting more power while I'm out riding my Suron. And when I get back, this gas tank here, this electron gas tank is full or more full. And then I'll plug that back in. And so it's a really great setup. It's not the most cost effective. You're looking to spend over $3,000 for a goal zero. Uh, and you're looking to spend about four to $500 uh, new for these panels. Now, I bought these used. I got them for about $400 each, one for $350 and one for $400 used. Great condition. Um, people often buy these things and then actually don't use them. Uh, I like to use it quite a bit just for fun, but also as a backup and for when I'm camping. So it works out for me because it's a great backup power system. It can run a refrigerator and power your whole entire house, but it's also great for remote power. So you don't have to have a stinky, noisy generator with gas and oil and all that. Yes, it's an expensive option. You're looking at close to $4,000 here new. But if you get this thing used like I did, along with the battery pack, I ended up getting this, this uh, charging station. I think I got this uh, 3000 Yeti and one of these solar suitcases for like 2200 bucks. So one way to look at it is uh, I paid full price for the panel at 400 and I got this Yeti for 1800 which is about half price. And it was barely even used. So it was a great value. Um, so total, I spent probably maybe 2500 for this setup, roughly. And that is a lot more reasonable, in my opinion, to get 400 watts of power, 3,000 watt hours of storage, and it does 2,000 watts of pure sine wave output. So you can run, you know, a lot of power. I mean, you can run a vacuum, a blow dryer off this, which is a lot of power. And, uh, or you could charge technically two or three Surons at once with this inverter. Um, I would probably run two and you'd be pulling 1500 watts and you'd have two outlets running perfect. You'll kill the battery a little quicker that way, but uh, you are able to charge two Surons at once. You will need to charge a little longer in between. You won't be able to get as many cycles out of it. But uh, taking this out to the desert, I'm able to get about one to two tanks per day out of just the sun and have enough in reserve to be able to last me uh, through the night to do pretty well. So. It's a pretty good setup. Uh, I can't complain about it too much for 2,500 bucks. It allows me to do this stuff remote where I like to do this ride. And like I said, I would already have this system anyway. So for me, it works. Um, you know, take a look at it online if you'd like. It's Goal Zero. These are the Boulder 200 briefcase panels. They're each 200 watts, each suitcase for a total of 400 watts, and this is the Goal Zero Yeti 3000X, which puts out 2000 watts pure sine wave and 3500 surge. So there it is, folks. That's my solar Suron setup. Be sure to like and comment below. Let me know what you guys do if you take yours out to the desert, what kind of setup you guys do, and how you're able to charge as well when you go on long rides. Thanks for watching.